Hi, I'm Nolly Waterman. <laughs> Throughout my career, I've learned that if you know the basics, you'll go far. Same with your finances. Understanding the basics of banking is the first step to success. Get ready to level up. Nolly Waterman there. Now don't get me wrong, I loved doing maths, geography and French at school. J'ai un chat et deux chiens. But I wish I'd learned more about banking and how it works. If you feel the same, fear not. HSBC UK, Nolly and I are here to help. In rugby, there are various ways to score points. Tries, penalties, drop goals. They're all different and can give you a boost in different ways. It's the same with your bank accounts. Okay, bank accounts. Let's take a look at some of the options. First up, a current account. This is for your day-to-day -day spending. It's typically the account any money you earn gets paid into, the one you pay your bills from, and the one you'll use to pay and receive money from friends, family, or, well, anyone really. You get a debit card to help you pay for things and get cash out of ATMs. Plus, they're super easy to manage with mobile banking, meaning you can transfer money, manage your direct debits, check on your balance, and even block your card if you lose it, all from the comfort of your phone. Next up, a savings account. You can use this to help your money grow. Once you've set up a savings account and put some money in, either as a lump sum or a bit at a time, that money earns interest over time, which is like a reward you get for saving, helping your funds grow so you can reach your goals. There are two main types of savings accounts. With fixed rate accounts, the money you put in is locked away, usually for one year or more. You can't get at it without paying a penalty, but you know exactly how much you'll get at the end because the interest rate is, like it says on the tin, fixed. Then there's instant access accounts. These are more flexible and let you take money out whenever you want. You can earn interest, but the rate might not be as good. So that's savings. But that's not all you can do with your money, right, Nolly? That's right. When it comes to your finances, your bank can be an important teammate. If you know how to use them, they can really help move your finances forward. Thanks, Nolly. Now, before we go any further, remember it's sensible to have at least six months of living expenses put to one side. So it's there if you need it. If you do have money left over and you want to make it work for you, you can invest it. There are two main things you can invest in, shares and funds. Buying a share is buying a stake in a single company. A fund is where your money is looked after by an expert known as a fund manager, who invests it in different ways depending on how adventurous you are. If your shares or funds do well, so do you. And if they don't, well, important warning, you could lose some or all of your original stake. So think carefully. And whether you invest or save, you can do it through an ISA or individual savings account. This allows you to save a certain amount each year. And here's the good news, without having to pay tax on any money those savings earn for you. Okay, so that's investing. What's next, Nolly? If I started talking about a gain line or a grubber kick, you may well be confused by the rugby jargon. It's the same with different types of borrowing, but don't worry, we've got you covered. Nolly's right. There's a whole squad of borrowing terms which you may or may not have heard of. Let's take a look at some of the key players. First, arranged overdrafts. These are your backup, your first line of defence. An arranged overdraft is like an extra buffer on your regular current account, with a set limit agreed by your bank which you can borrow up to if you need to. This can help tide you over till payday or help you pay for things like an unexpected bill you'll probably have to pay some interest, which in this case is what you pay for borrowing the money. And if you go over your agreed limit, it could negatively impact your credit rating. So be careful. Next up, it's your medium term solutions, like credit cards. These let you buy now and pay later, unlike debit cards where you pay the full cost of things when you buy them. Credit cards come with a credit limit agreed by the bank. You need to pay at least the minimum payment every month which is usually a percentage of what you owe. If you don't, you may be charged fees. The more you repay, the less interest you'll be charged. So if you can pay it off in full each month, go for it. Then we have personal loans, designed for your bigger purchases, like a new car, kitchen or wedding. You borrow a fixed amount of money, usually between 1,000 and 25,000 pounds, for an agreed amount of time, at the end of which you pay the full amount back plus interest. And because the interest rate is fixed, you know exactly how much you're paying back each month and how many repayments you'll need to make. And one thing you really need to know about if you're borrowing is APR. The APR, or the annual percentage rate, is the cost of borrowing money over a year on your overdraft, credit card or personal loans. It takes into account all the different elements, interest, annual fee, arrangement fees and so on. 
It's a handy tool for making comparisons between your options for borrowing and can help you get the best deal. The lower the APR, the better. And that's all for this video. You can learn more about borrowing, saving and other aspects of banking on the HSBC UK website. OK, over to you, Nolly. Now you've got the knowledge to help you tackle banking, it's time to get out on the pitch and show your stuff. Good luck!